The late great mythologist Joseph Campbell, one of my personal heroes. Yeah. He proposed there was a monomyth. There's only one story. That's the one that we're in right now, where you all come and we all come and we're all together in this story. But when asked where the great monomyth, the neo monomyth of your age, Star Wars came from. George Lucas said it came from Joe Campbell. So, when Joseph Campbell was asked, what's your favorite story? Peggy and I were all ears. We wanted to know what was it, what was it, what was it thinking? And what came out was an African folk tale. But that African folk tale was the first cycle of the great Star Wars epic. See if you don't agree. Okay, first of all, who out here kind of suspects that, well, maybe, or maybe it's not even suspecting, it is really hoping that you were accidentally sent home with the wrong family after you were born? They can't be kin to me. <laughs> or in my parents' case, they were hoping that was true with me. <laughs> well, th th not, not right away. It was after I brought him home and said I was going to marry him. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but this is the story. There was a great drought that gripped the land. It hadn't rained in over a year. The river stopped flowing. The watering holes were drying, mud puddles. And the grass turned brown, dried up, and blew away. The only animals left were those who are just waiting around to die. <sighs> those animals, they left by ones, twos, tens, twenties, thirties, hundreds, oh, thousands. Now, and there was one animal that stayed behind. That was a young lioness. The only reason she stayed behind was because she was pregnant. She was just too big to travel. Her plan was to deliver her cub, and once it was strong enough to walk beside her, then they could both leave. But as the days passed, it grew harder and harder for her to find food, and she started to get frightened. And then one morning she woke up and by the changes in her body, she knew this was the day that her cub would be born. She was scared. She hadn't eaten in days. She was afraid she couldn't survive the delivery of the cub. So she went out on one last desperate hunt. She listened as the wind blew past her ears. And then she stopped, lifted her nose, and <laughs> sniffed the air. Ah, uh, no doubt about it. Somewhere nearby was a herd of goats. She walked over to a little cliff that looked down into a valley below. And there she saw a little spring bubbling up. Around that spring was a pond. Around that pond, a small patch of grass. Feeding on that grass was a herd of goats. Ah, food. Maybe she and her cub would survive. She just hoped she could survive the jump. She leapt into the valley. And landed with a splat. <laughs> All the goats scattered in terror. Now, when the goats returned a few hours later, they discovered to their horror, there in their middle of their beautiful little peaceful green valley, now lay a dead lioness. And even worse, next to that dead lioness was a little lion cub, and it was still alive. Now immediately the goats started arguing among themselves, what are we gonna do with this little lion cub? And then finally it was agreed. They would just raise it as one of their own. And so it came that, uh, little lion cub was passed from mother goat to mother goat and that rich goat's milk why he grew big and strong he grew too big and too strong in no time at all those mother goats were pushing that little lion cub off and teaching it how to eat grass and now things started to go terribly wrong for that little cub he started to lose weight his ribs stuck out on both sides. His hair began to fall out in patches. His little paws cracked and bled with every step. Now, anyone who looked at the cub could tell immediately he was starving to death. But those goats, they didn't say a word to him. 
Now, by this time, the rains had at last returned. Once again, the rivers began to flow. The watering holes filled up. And the grass grew tall and green. And the animals began to return. By ones, twos, tens, twenties, hundreds, and thousands. Now, one afternoon, a magnificent lion came into the area. As he was walking along, he grew hungry, and so he listened as the wind blew past his ears. Then he stopped, lifted his nose, and sniffed the air. Ah, goats. So he walked over to a cliff that looked down into a little valley below. And there he saw a little spring bugling up. Around that spring was a pond. Around that pond, a patch of grass. And feeding on that grass was a herd of goats. Ah, easy pickings. He crouched and sprang. And the goat scattered in terror. He didn't care. He had caught his meal when he landed. But when he picked up his mighty paw and see what he caught, it was a terrified, skinny, uh, ugly, miserable-looking little lion cub. Hey, boy, what are you doing here? And that poor, terrified little cub looked up at him and said, <laughs> well, what'd you say to me, boy? You, you sound like a goat. Come on, boy. Lions roar. Give me a roar. But the little cub just shook his head. Goat! <laughs> no, boy, you ain't no goat. Come here, let me show you. He pushed him over to that still pond and held his magnificent maned head beside the reflection of that pitiful cub. Now, you... You could, I gotta admit, you are a pretty pitiful excuse for a lion, but look, you look a lot more like me than those goats you've been living with. You are a lion. But once again, the cub just said, goat. No, you're a lion. Now, the lion started to think about where he found the cub and who he found the cub with and how the cub sounded. He started putting two and two together real fast and he didn't like what it added up to. And he also figured out that cub was gonna be dead soon if he didn't do something and he wasn't about to have a dead cub on his paws. <laughs> so he snatched the little cub up, dashed off to a nearby cave, set the cub down and said, wait here boy, I'll be right back. That poor little cub was so terrified he froze right where the lion dropped him. Shortly the old lion returned with a freshly killed gazelle. Now, the lion started ripping off hunks of that gazelle meat, shoving it in his mouth, chewing it up, and swallowing. Then he took a chunk and held it out to the little cub. Here, boy, try this. But the little cub just looked at horror, shook his head, and said, Grass! <laughs> no, ain't no more grass for you. You are a lion. You gotta eat lion food. Eat this or you'll die. Goat! Grass! <laughs> No, man. <laughs> the old lion had enough. He opened his mouth and stuffed a chunk of gazelle meat in and clamped it shut. He held it shut for so long that the little cub finally gave up and swallowed. Ah, the old lion stepped back and eyed the cub to see what he'd do. And that cub just glared at him. But after a couple of minutes... He spoke again. More? <laughs> sure, kid, you can have more. Eat all you want. There's lots more where that came from. And the little cub ate his fill, and when he was done, then the lion finished his dinner. The old lion looked down at the cub and said, Today, boy, you've had your very first lesson in how to be the lion that you truly are. Now I'd like to show you something else that lions are really, really good at. And he stretched out in that afternoon sun. <sighs> we take great nap. <laughs> uh, he liked the sound of that, so he stretched out next to that lion and started to nod off. But before he went to sleep, he looked back over at that lion. <laughs> And the old lion looked down and said, I am your father, Luke. <laughs> <laughs>